Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm painting winter landscapes from photographs in watercolour. It's a demonstration painting and I'm calling this part one. I'm calling this video part one because I'm going to be painting another scene um, from a similar area on the same day and I'll be putting that up uh, on YouTube next week. There were interesting things to tackle in both the photographs that I took. Uh, they were going to be, I think, quite challenging and um, the paintings that I'm going to do, I haven't done before. It's not a step-by-step -step or anything. It was quite experimental. I was working out how to um, actually paint the picture as I went along. So I hope you're going to enjoy the painting process and um, maybe learn something about how to build up a painting in watercolour. Especially if you like the way I paint, then you might um, pick up some tips along the way that you can incorporate into your own paintings. I really enjoyed painting these and I, I was very pleased with the result actually. Um, they turned out better than I sort of expected because as I said it's quite challenging. If you're looking at this particular photograph I was quite interested in trying to get all that detail in the foreground with all the, um, the foliage and the earth and everything showing through and I was particularly taken looking at this photograph with those three trees on the left hand side. So for this particular painting I didn't use the whole photograph and I'll show you the crop that I did that um, I actually did the painting from. So this is the crop that I used. Working from photographs, sometimes you will use the whole photograph that you took and sometimes you will take a sort of a, a landscape, a panoramic view of what's in front of you, which I tend to do. And then when I get them home, I like to have a good look at them and see which bits interest me and crop them down. So this is the photograph that I'll be working through today on the video. You will see as I'm working, I kept the shape of the trees. I really like the three trees in the foreground. I like the shapes of them and I like the distant trees. I didn't include the tree on the right. I just didn't think it was a nice shape, but I didn't think it fitted the composition that I wanted. So. I think it can be a bit of a mistake sometimes when you, particularly when you're starting out painting, you take photographs, you think you've got to put everything in it and you think you've got to put everything in the same place. Well, you don't. And you can see from this, the way I approach my work is taking a big picture, finding bits I like, using that and moving things around if you want to and taking things out. Now, this is going to be painting winter landscapes part two because this is the second picture that I work from. Now, I, this was quite different because this was the actual photograph that I took. I like the composition. I like the trees on the left hand side when I was out there. I am very fond of doing foregrounds and I like the distance of the trees and the shadows across. Um, I think it was the lake there still that was that was frozen over. So this was quite a different way of working really from photographs first one I cropped down, this one I basically painted it almost as it was. I did make a few changes um, to the composition. I felt the two trees on the left were a little bit too much on the edge so I just moved those over a little bit. So I've actually painted this, um, this picture and that will be coming up next week. So back to the, to the first um, photograph that I'm working from. You can see from my sketch here that I am um, as I said, I kept those three main trees in there and I suggested a little gate or fence or something that was there and then we've got the, the distant trees. I've only done a very, very rough sketch because I thought I might sort of change things as I went along, but I've got things in the places where I think they were going to work and um, I think that composition is okay. I didn't do a lot of masking out. I used the regular masking fluid that I use, which is the PBO, which works very well. And I put a little bit on the trees where the snow was. There were little bits of snow settled on the trunks. And I put some on these, um, I think they were grasses or flower heads or something that had got the, um, the snow on top of them. I didn't use a lot of masking fluid. I'd but in this picture, but I did need, I felt I did need this because I didn't want to put a lot of gouache on there. 
gouache or any opaque white is invaluable in watercolour painting, but I personally don't like to use a lot of it. I find it a bit difficult to use, particularly the white gouache. It tends to be a bit blobby and getting the right consistency is difficult. I prefer to use masking fluid where I can and leave the white of the paper showing through in most places to represent the snow. My colour palette was very limited in this painting. It was Payne's Grey with um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, possibly a little bit of light red and a little bit of cobalt blue. And it was um, it was a warm grey, the photograph, wasn't it? There was no blue in it, any bright colours in it. So you can see I put on this grey background and then with the darker mix, probably the burnt umber and the Payne's Grey, I put the wet into wet trees in the distance. I've shown you the mix that I'm using. It's quite a stiff mix and the background is staying wet. I saw some blue in the photograph and so I popped a little bit of that in as I was working. I did add a tiny little bit of salt um, that's apparent um, as the wash dries, but it's not really necessary to add the salt and I certainly wouldn't use it to have any really strong salt effects in here. And then I mixed up the cobalt blue, knocked it back a little bit with um, either Payne's Grey or Burnt Umber to just put some shadows on the foreground. I find it better to put the shadow effects on before I do anything else because if you put the shadows on afterwards then you can disturb the paint that's underneath and you can smudge um, you can smudge everything that you've painted underneath, like the trunks and the um, and the little few leaves and things that you're going to put on there. So I would certainly put your shadow on first. You don't need too much, but you do need that little bit of blue. You do need a little bit of blue to contrast against the, the white of the paper. I thought I would use a little bit of sponge to sort out this um, these little bits and leaves and foliage and things in the foreground. I've used a sponge before I'll, um, for doing spring foliage and trees and I'll put you a link in the description box um, which explains a bit more detail about how I use it but basically you just want a little bit of sponge and you dip it into the paint um, as you can see there on my palette and you do need quite a bit of paint because the sponge soaks it up. I would use a small amount of sponge and then what I'm trying to do is to dab it on. Um, I sometimes squeeze the sponge a little bit to get more of the paint out. And what I'm trying to do is vary the position where I put it so it's not too samey. And also changing the colour and the tone a little bit. I'm using those same colours there, the paint's grey and the brown. And um, perhaps adding a touch more warmth as I'm doing there to bring in more of the burnt sienna into the um, into the foreground area. So I'm building it up. Um, I was being, as I said, I hadn't done this before. It was quite new to, to use this technique on the snow. So I was just sort of feeling my way with it. The type of sponge you want to use, I'm using a small bit of a natural sponge, which I think works better than the, uh, the other sponges that we tend to use sometimes. And then, as that was drying, I put some of the very dark colour on a, a small brush or a rigger and I just used some small marks to stand for the little twigs and the bits and pieces that were around and again trying to vary the tone. So adding some quite dark bits in there. As it was drying, the darks were staying put and um, I was adding a little bit more of the burnt sienna as well. As I said, I was sort of feeling my way around doing this. It's a sort of work I like to do, sort of dotting around and making a mess. And then a bit of splattering. So covering the top area up, because my splattering goes everywhere. You can see from here, as I'm drying this, that that salt was working. Um, as I said, it's not essential to use that, but it was working quite well there. And here you can see on the close-up some of the effects, the drying, and the, um, the effects of the salt and how the foreground dried. I will be working more on that foreground. So when everything was dry, then I, um, I tackled the, the three trees. I didn't want to do a lot of form in them or a lot of detail. 
but I did want to vary the the tones a little bit in there. I um and I wanted to make them look a bit natural, not to have too straight an edge. I think you can fall into the trap of having when you're painting trees of having them far too regular and having them really straight edged sort of on either side so they look more like telegraph poles. So what I was trying to do then was um, mix up some dark and put in some really darks in places so that you're just varying the tone and break up the edges a little bit as you can see by just dotting around and making some sort of natural marks in there. I worked the other two trees in the same way, um, possibly make them a little bit lighter because they're a little bit further away. I think this composition works because you've got the tree in the foreground. Um, I think these probably count as middle distance, these trees I'm painting now, and then you've got the far distance with the wet into wet. So you've got the three planes of the picture going on here, and I think that does help a lot when you're doing a landscape painting. It gives you this feeling of, of depth in the picture. So here you can see I felt it needed a little bit more sponge work at the back there. And I made a start putting a few more darks in the foreground with a sponge. It's amazing how it dried back. It looked really dark. And as it dried back, it got really back into a mid-tone. I think the trees um, in the photograph I was using were older. And what I did was um, I used my second photograph, which I knew these trees were older because I looked it up. And on this painting I'm doing now, I put on the cones and the, what do they call, the cones and the catkins on the branches just to add a bit more life because I think sometimes the bare twigs and branches can look as if a tree is dead. And this is what I ended up with on this stage. Um, unfortunately, everything was going swimmingly and then I didn't record that little bit. So I've recorded an extra little piece to pop in here to show you how I do the twigs and popped on all those little bits and bobs that were on the twigs and branches. I added a touch of light red to the dark mix for the cones and the catkins because I felt they had um, a certain amount of warmth to them. I then with quite a dark mix did strengthen the, the foreground tree to bring it a little bit further forward with my dark mix. And then I went on to, again with a small brush, to build up the foreground. So as you can see, as I'm working the picture, I'm not actually completing an area. I'm working around the picture and then I'm, I'm sort of judging how the areas are working against each other and building it up as I go along. There was a sort of little fence and um, little sort of hedge row and things in this position here where I'm painting and I used some dry brush with quite a, a warm colour on there with some uh, burnt sienna in it and suggested the little fence line there. And again, dotting around, just trying to judge the tones against each other and the shapes and the colours as I was working. When everything was really dry, then I um, I took off the masking fluid. At this stage, I like to put on a, an old mount. It does help to see how the picture is shaping up and what you need to do to go forwards, I think. I put a little bit of cobalt shadow 
underneath some of the snow that was on the tree. The space was left after I'd taken the masking fluid off. So they sort of sat on the tree more than were too prominent. And I think that does work quite well. You need to make your blue fairly strong or it doesn't show up. And I probably went back and um, put a little bit more in there in places just so that it's looking like shadow on there. I did some work on the plants and foliage in the foreground. I didn't want to overdo it, make it too fussy. There were, I was looking at the reference all the time and there were these stems coming down using a rigger and a dark mix. There were some very green leaves apparent on this, um, on this foliage here and um, I think it made a nice contrast against the other colours. I think putting some green into a, a winter snow scene might be counterintuitive, but I mean, if you think about it, there is a lot of green going on in them. There's the leaves I'm putting on now, and particularly um, what I like to paint is the ivy as well. Growing up, the winter trees can be very green, especially when the sun's catching it. You can get almost spring greens in there. And finally, I wanted to tidy up a few areas, put some snow on the branches, particularly where they're overlapping, as you can see here, that works really well. So you get the overlap of the trees showing. I didn't want to use too much of the gouache, as I said before. In actual fact, I didn't use gouache for this. I used um, a pen white, and I'll put a link to that in the description. I find it works a little bit better for me than gouache. And as you can see, I did dot around a little bit, putting some of the pen white onto the cones and the little catkins on the elder, and also putting a few, just a few sort of very thin, random white lines to stand as twigs as well, to add a little bit of movement in there. This was the final painting and I could have left it at that and I took a photograph in case I messed up the next stage but I thought it could do with some splatter work. I thought the dark was a little bit too dark and I didn't want to start lifting out so I did a bit of splattering on there to, to knock the dark back a bit. So there we are, I hope you like the finished picture. I really enjoyed painting this one and the next one that's coming up. Um, the next one, there won't be the sponge work in it. I'll be concentrating more on the foreground with all that tangle of brambles. So if you don't want to miss that or anything else that I'm going to do in the future, then do subscribe to my channel and happy painting to everybody and bye for now.